This is the first of two videos from our ride in the Flinders Ranges with David and Renee. We opted to stay at Rawnsley Park Station, which is one of many places you can stay in the Flinders area. We did this for three nights, just so we could have a base and leave our gear behind. There's also a caravan park camping area about a kilometre up the road. leaving Rawnsley Park Station. Pretty busy here, a lot of caravans. Oh. Going in different directions. Holy jings, there's the emus. <laughs> They're looking for David. Of course the emu jokes went on all trip ever since the emu cleaned up David on the Ivanhoe Menindi Road. Okay, I'm riding up Pugie List Hill Lookouts. It looks pretty steep. I don't know if the GoPro shows how steep it looks, but it looks steep to me. She's a bit cut out here. Up high, yeah, it's nice. Oh, yeah, it's just a hill at the top. A few cramps. Oh, golly, have a go! That's beautiful. That side's magnificent because it's not into the sun. I forgot about turning. views up here really were amazing and photos and video they don't do the Flinders area justice and that was the first thing that I discovered you really got to come here and see for yourself it seemed to us that all the public roads were pretty well graded in the Flinders Ranges, well looked after. This is still Martins Well Road on the way out to Martins Well. And if you didn't know, the growling sound footage is from Renee's GoPro on her 850GS. back to Flinders Ranges Way to head to Wilpena Pound. It's a popular place with lots of people staying there and they've also got food, coffee and premium fuel.
just after Wilpina Pound is the famous Casno tree. The red river gum, over 500 years old, made famous by Harold Casno's photo, taken in 1937. And off to the sacred canyon. Restricted access. Guided entry, aren't we? Oh, the trees look all dead or something. Doesn't look like bushfire dead or anything. Twelve kilometres. Turn right on Sacred Canyon Road. So it's not as dead looking now, it's similar, opening up a little. As we expected, the gates were locked, so you were only able to access this area through commercial tour operators booked at Wilpina Pound. Flint is sort of circled by these really good bitumen roads. Flint is ranges way. Quite a lot of emus we've seen so far as well. The old Hux Lookout. Stokes Hill Lookout. So far the hill lookouts have seemed quite good. It's certainly a hill, they look nice and high when you're in the bottom. David's up your right. Just like Puget List Lookout, Stokes Hill is another wonderful lookout offering beautiful views. So out and back, so you turn around, ride back down the hill, back to Flinders Ranges Way. One more bit of sightseeing before we headed to one of the most spectacular roads and this was Will's historic homestead. The area is actually called the Apollina Ruins. So in 1850 after Joseph Willis built, copper miners arrived and started to settle across the creek. For 13 years they had arguments over the lease boundaries and there's lots of remnants of the settlements that were in the area. Leaving the ruins The ruins really shows houses and how people used to live in the 1800s. Quite amazing.
There's lots of unbelievable areas to ride in the Flinders, and this is over the start or the end of one of them. This area does require a National Parks Pass, which you just do online. There's lots of camping and has the yellow-footed rock wallaby colony. on a given trip these routes need to be ridden in both directions and that's what we'll be doing next time there was actually no signs of any water anywhere else so it was very interesting to see these pools of water on the road Bunyaroo Road might be the most well-known or the most well-driven road in the whole Flinders and certainly one where most photos are taken. through the gorge seemed more interesting and I think this area we seem to have passed more cars than we saw for the whole trip. so good when drivers are friendly and not in a rush. these roads in both directions because when you're looking in one way there could be mountains behind you and that's what looks so amazing riding in towards these mountains. probably the most well-known and certainly the most photographed area in the Flinders.
This is the Razorback Lookout, probably the most stunning area in the whole of the Flinders. We've actually been riding east towards Hawker, and I reckon that that's the right way to go in the afternoon, and in the morning you should ride in the other direction and head west. Three of us actually rode back down to Bunyuru Valley Lookout and back so that Tony was able to capture us in my favourite photo for the trip. See how well graded the roads are. The riding's really easy, but still very, very enjoyable. roads always winding and climbing, going up and down through dips, and there's so much good scenery to look at, and we really did have perfect weather. Put a new battery in the GoPro at Razorback Lookout and broke the audio mod, so that was it for the rest of the trip. No more microphone. Rene's GoPro is mounted on the left hand side of the handlebars. Park Station and it's about 36 kilometres this side of Hawker. You can also do plenty of walks from there. There's a caravan park who sell obviously food and also premium petrol. on the Flinders Ranges Way and heading towards Hawker. Staying at Rawnsley Park, you could obviously cook your own dinner, or there is a pretty good restaurant there if you're looking for something quite nice. There's a swimming pool which wasn't open, probably in summer, and a coin-operated laundry.